my name is Evans Claude Sabi. Welcome to the channel. I'm a fitness trainer, nutrition coach, dating and relationship coach as well. On this channel, I offer you insights to live not just a healthy and fit lifestyle, but also cultivate meaningful relationships with people who mean the most to you. So if those are topics that interest you, please consider subscribing and head over to my website to learn more about what I do. In this video, we're going to stay in the realm of fitness and explore different frame options. I'm leaving one down here. Different frame options from Roca that might be useful for some of you who work out a lot and are tired of switching from contact lenses to glasses or just want one pair of glasses to use from working out in the gym or wherever you work out at to going about your life. That's what we're going to explore in this video. Stick around. All right, so I bit the bullet and ordered the Roca Home tryout kit just to give it a shot for myself because off late, I've been getting tired of putting in contacts in the morning, taking them out in the evening and soaking them and doing the same thing over and over again. And I just wanna have glasses that I can use and have on, uh, just wake up in the morning, put on glasses and go about my day. So I ordered Roca because I heard of them from the Huberman lab and I was like, this is something I've been looking for for the last 10 years or so, because working out every day and having to put on contacts is just, it gets tedious, as I mentioned. So I ordered them, and in this video, uh, we are going to learn on a few things. One is the ordering process. How easy is it uh, for you to order them? Two, we are going to look at uh, the characteristics of these frames that I picked. So if they happen to be frames that you might be interested in, there are a few things I'm going to point out there that might sway your decision if you're going to do the same as far as order your own kit. I will put them through a vigorous test workout to see if they hold up to the claims that they're making. And whether they hold up or not, I will also rank them on which ones I think are the most comfortable according to me. So keep that in mind. This is my own opinion. The shape of my head is going to be different from a lot of people. So if this is something that you are thinking of doing, just be mindful that my head might be a little bit different from yours. And you can take my opinion, but also be very mindful of the characteristics of your facial structure that might be different from mine. And lastly, I will let you guys know which frame I end up ordering and the configuration that I pick. So let's get into it. For those of you who don't want to watch the video to the very end and just want to know if I like these glasses that I have here from Roca, uh, these frames, uh, do they feel any good? Do I like them? The answer to that is I don't like them. Um, I fucking love them. I think they're a game changer. I wear glasses on a regular basis. Uh, I love the look of my current glasses. I've had them for four years, but they are very inconvenient when it comes to working out. They ended up pinching me. Every time I work out in them, they pinch me somewhere around the temple here and they start sliding out little by little after each and every exercise that I do. So when I heard of Roca and the claims that they were making, to me that was somewhat of those uh, unbelievable where I was like, that can't be. I have to try these things out for myself. Why? It's because I've been looking for something that claims to take away the temple pressure and also stay around while also looking good and being comfortable. So I ended up ordering them. As much as shopping online has become the norm nowadays, uh, ordering prescription glasses online has never been my thing. And I think that is the reason why it's taken me so long to even come up on Roca and the uh, products that they offer. I'm the kind of guy who goes into a store, tries 10 glasses and then says, okay, five of these are out and then, and tries the remaining five, decides to give three. And then from those three, I try them again and pick one. That's kind of always been the process. So buying glasses from Roca or any online place is something that I'm very hesitant on to be truthful. And one thing I can say about the Roca website, it's very easy to navigate. You might see they have different offerings. If you go on their website, they cater to athletic people, people who move quite a bit. Uh, when it comes to, uh, they have sunglasses, uh, other glasses you can work out in, but they also have eyeglasses that, of course, you can work out in as well. And that's what I was interested in from the beginning. And they have options where you can just choose the frame that you like, fill up the prescription and order it right away. But I wanted to try some of the frames they have and see if the claims they were making were uh, upholding 
when you actually have the product. So I went ahead with the home tryout kit, which I think is about $15 that ends up getting put towards your order if you order glasses at the end of the uh, tryout. So I was comfortable with that. I had no issues at all. And when I placed that order, it took about five business days for them to deliver the glasses to my home where I live in Portland, Oregon. And I think Roca is situated somewhere in Texas, Austin, Texas, if I'm not wrong. So five business days, you can get to choose if that's sufficient for you. But to me, that was very acceptable. I did not mind it at all. The home tryout options that I ordered were the Oslo's, Hunter uh, Evans, and the Collins. And as soon as I opened the box and tried all the four options uh, that I had ordered, the two that stood out to me were the Oslo's and of course the Evans. And right away, as soon as you try them on and comparing them to my current glasses, which are the um, Ray-Ban frames here, you could notice the weight difference. It's day and night. And I did go ahead to make sure that I weigh each and every one of them. The Oslo's and the Hunter's are kind of very similar where the Oslo I think is about 20.3 grams while the Hunter is about 20.2 grams. So they're very similar even if you look at the makeup that they have when it comes to the temple and the attachments. And at the same time, we also have the Evans and the Collins that are also weight-wise very similar. Design is also quite a bit uh, identical. And at the same time, the arms, which are made out of titanium, are super lightweight. So I think that contributes to the 17.3 uh, and 17.5 or 17.8 grams that they carry. And when it comes to the weight difference, I have my current Ray-Bans right now weigh around 30 grams, so 30.4-ish, uh, give or take. And these other ones are 20.4 and 20 point, 20.3 and 20.2. You can tell the difference. The 10 gram difference on how it feels on your head is completely night and day, as I mentioned earlier. I was amazed by the uh, just the lightweightness of it, and at the same time, the glasses not feeling cheap just because they're super light. So they managed to get that good balance of lightweight to get the performance and the stability, and at the same time, they uh, also made them feel premium, which is something that I like. Now, if you're wondering, is there any performance difference holdability to your face. I'm not even sure that's a word. Uh, when it comes to the 20 gram versions of their frames to the 17 grams frames and performance, none at all. And we'll get a tiny bit deeper into that in the later section when we are looking at the comfort and which ones I would rank how as far as on the comfort scale. Another aspect of the glasses that kind of gives them their wow factor is the grippy material that they have towards the temple and on the nose piece, which is, they call it gecko. And it does make a huge difference when it comes to them staying on your face and not moving when you're doing all these movements and exercising. To me, the hype is justifiable. They work really, really well to a point where you don't even notice them. You don't even feel the pressure points that I was trying to be very mindful of uh, when I started this journey of exploring these options of frames. Now, if it were up to me and I was to design a frame, I would say I would have gone with uh, the front design of the Oslo's with the arms of the Evans and the call or the Collins, uh, just because these arms are so nice when it comes to uh, the way they feel when you fold them. I know it's a very minuscule thing to be uh, to be putting a spotlight on, but you'll be taking these glasses off let's say once or twice every day. But just knowing that you can fold these and drop them to where they're supposed to be compared to the arms you find in the Oslo's that you feel like you have to yank open. Uh, it's a very small thing, but it makes a huge difference on the whole experience to me. Now on top of looks, which is important, uh, one of the reasons why I got them was performance. And I wanted to keep an eye on, and yes, eye on, pun intended, on how they perform during workouts. So I spent two weeks testing these different frames, putting them through the regular exercises that I do, which as I mentioned earlier, it's a functional bodybuilding. So a mix of CrossFit and bodybuilding exercises to see how I would like them. Now, I'm happy to report all these frames stayed on my face, even though 
there were some that were more comfortable than others. Some of the exercises that I tested these on were things like bike arc riding, which sometimes can get really sweaty, especially when you're going and just cycling and in one place. And I also did box jumps, box jumps with burpees. We're also looking at pressing exercises. I did squats in them as well, and just things that require you to move quite a bit and make faces because when you're working out, sometimes you have to make those faces that just come with the territory of moving, of feeling good, and of uh, struggling. You know, there are those faces like, uh, you know, I don't have to tell you because you probably make those faces as well. But that's what I wanted to know. Through all those facial movements, through those bodily movements and gravitational pulls in different directions, how were they going to, uh, to stay in? Now, I will say all of them stayed in. There is one that kinda had a little bit of a not so good fit with me, and those were the hunters. Now, there is something about them that the arms are somewhat curved, so they created some sort of a hollow space here that when I'm doing something like a burpee or just regular walkouts, they tended to slip a little bit more. They never fell off my face, but this, there was that slippage that I could feel that was noticeable compared to when I was wearing the Oslo's, it was not noticeable at all. And when I was wearing something like the um, Evans and the Collins, which again, these guys are characteristically very similar, I didn't notice any movement. As soon as you put them on, you start moving, nothing happens. Um, and I truly loved uh, that aspect of them. I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier, but none of these frames had any pressure points, which was very uh, comforting to realize that now there were options for me that I could work out in. And that was a really uh, welcome surprise. When I was doing shoulder presses, there was not really any adjustments that I had to do, even when the weight went higher, because most times when I'm wearing these and you make that first expression of pushing up, they tend to kind of go up and when they come down, they slide. And none of the rocker frames that I had did that. And that was a good thing. And when I was doing back extensions, all the frames stayed in, but what I noticed with the rockers is they had a little movement because when my upper body was coming up, it tended to tilt down and up during the movement. So I was not so fond of those and I retired the rockers right away. So what I'm gonna do right now is just put them on the side as well because that proved to me they were not designed for somebody with a facial structure like what I have. And when I was doing walkouts, that same thing also kept on happening with the uh, hunters that I decided to, again, not keep trying them. So other exercises that I tried were uh, burpees, which is something I do once or twice a week, even though I'm not really a fan of them. Uh, it just comes with the territory of working out. Sometimes you have to do things that suck. Uh, I also tried to do squats with them. All of them really held up well. Even when I was doing burpees, the Oslo's, Collins, and Evans stayed on pretty well. That was really unexpected, but I was very happy to see that. I also did kettlebell swings to see how they're going to stay when uh, there is so much momentum with weight. And a good thing with that, uh, all the glasses stayed. So to me, I kept on being impressed with each and every testing that I did. And the two exercises that I was so looking forward to do to test these glasses with were box jumps and bike arg because sometimes I spend 30 minutes just doing the same thing on a bike arg and my Ray-Bans are a non-go when it comes to sweat accumulating and they start sliding out, they start pinching me uh, on the side of my temple. So I was very happy to see that even when I was propelling my body up during box jumps, coming down, all that movement, all that momentum didn't really disturb the positioning of the glasses. And sometimes I would even do box jumps, come down and do burpees, no movement was noticeable at all. So super surprised, very pleased, and very happy with that. With the bike arg, I stayed on there. I normally do anywhere between uh, 5Ks on a very slow day to one hour of riding, which ends up being about closer to uh, 25K on the bike arg. These guys were phenomenal. I would just keep riding, not having to worry about readjusting my glasses, which was a new feeling. And at the same time, I would just either be watching something or listening to music and being present without having to interact with the back and forth pushing of the glasses that we sometimes have to do. So when it comes to the workouts, the three Oslo's, 
Evans and the Collins for me were a A plus as far as grading, performance, amazing. Uh, the Hunter, again, this is a very personal thing with the shape of my head. They were not the best thing for me. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you have a face like mine and it has no rounds, uh, it's not as filled on the side where it could fill up those gaps. That's just my experience. That's what I will leave it at that when it comes to performance. Now, comfort wise, the one thing that I kept on noticing when it comes to comfort is the lightweightness of the Collins and the Evans was welcomed, but it was not really necessary when it comes to giving me extra comfort compared to the Oslo's, which have a different grip or which have a different uh, just makeup of the same grip. And one thing I noticed is at the very end, at the tips of the Collins and the Evans, there's a slight bend that allows the glasses to slide in very comfortably along your head as far as your temple here to go to the, to the back. As you can see, that's where it's, it sits. And to me, that was way more comfortable than what you get on the Oslo, which goes, again, I feel like it gets really a little bit scratchy as it goes in. But as soon as you have it on for the first minute or two, you don't really notice the, the discomfort. It's just that when you're putting it, sometimes it can feel a little bit scratchy on the side here, at least on my case. So uh, that to me was uh, unfortunate to say the least, but I find it that is that scratchiness is something that I notice on a regular basis. Whereas when it comes to the Collins and the Evans, you just put them on, you don't even notice them and you're good to go. And another thing that I noticed, and this is more of a conditioning thing, uh, as far as I have been conditioned behavior wise to expect this is the temple kind of has a sharp curve towards the end when it comes to uh, what you see there. My current glasses have the same thing where they have a curving towards the end which felt very familiar when it comes to the uh, Collins and the Evans that is not as available on the Oslo's where they kind of go somewhat straight, they don't curve down compared to the other two. When it comes to comfort on the four glasses that I got, how I would rank them is the Hunters, get last place for me because again, they could not stay on my face during workouts and I need them to be comfortable, not just on workouts, also during the day. Love the shape, very similar to what I currently have, but the fact that they could not stay during workouts, to me, that was a no-no, also led to the uncomfortableness. The third place goes to the Oslo's. Now, this is me being very nitpicky here. Uh, these guys, once you put them on for the first minute or first 30 seconds, you notice them, but it's just that the fact that when you put them on, they feel a little bit scratchy. To me, that took away from the experience of using the glasses, especially when you're gonna do them, uh, when you're gonna use them on a daily basis and having to notice that. I appreciate when I can use a product and not notice things, you know, but some products, when you start using them, you start noticing them, it takes away from the experience. And that's what I kind of felt with the Oslo's because I think they're amazing glasses, beautiful design, my favorite front design. It's just that the tempo, the arm towards the end just, just takes away from the experience. So these are number three for me. And when it comes to comfort on these frames, uh, the number one is a tie to be honest because these guys are made up of the very same material, the shape as far as the temple arms is exactly the same and they're just as comfortable. However, I have to pick one. I have to choose which one to go with. And to me, looking at the shapes of the glasses and how I personally like them, and of course they all have that turquoise theme to them, which, um, is it turquoise or tortoise? Tortoise, sorry, feel to them. Uh, I ended up gravitating towards the Evans and I know my name is Evans, but that had nothing to do with it. What? No, had nothing, zero, <laughs> nothing at all. But exactly, it's uh, the fact that these are called Evans didn't really influence my choice, to be honest with you. It's just that out of everything, to me, this was my second best as far as front design compared to the uh, Oslo's being the first one. So I ended up going with the Evans as far as me liking the design where the Collins have a little bit of that sharp edge at the very top. The Evans do have the same thing, just, just a little, it's, it's, it's a little bit subtle. 
So my choice were the Evans. That's what I went with and ordered them with a high index uh, option, which I think is about $90 more on the website. And the reason why I chose the high index is because my prescription, one of them is a negative 4.5 and another one is negative 3.25. And that's what is recommended when it comes to uh, which type of glass to pick with your order. Um, and if you end up picking, let's say one of the cheaper ones and the guys at Roca end up finding that it might not be the best option. What I hear is they will reach out to you and say, hey, I know you picked this one, but according to either the frame and your prescription, this is what we would normally do with this particular uh, kind of prescription. So that did not happen to me. I just ended up not wanting the hassle. So I ended up ordering the high index option. That was $90 more as I mentioned. And I also picked the uh, photochromic treatments on the lenses. The reason why I do that is because even on my current class, I have them and being able to go outside and not have to worry about switching to sunglasses to me is that simplicity. I want to have one pair of glasses that I'm going to use for everything during the day and not switching between one glass to another. I do not care about having the cool sunglasses. I just want to have one thing and forget about the rest. So, and I just received an email from them that they should be here in the next couple of days. So from the day that I made the order and said, Hey, Here's my prescription. This is the option that I want to me receiving it, which should be in the next two days, will be about 10 days specifically. Uh, yeah, it will be about 10 days. So it took me 10 days from the day I ordered them to the way you get them. But I think they will tell you that it takes them up to 10 days to make them for you. And then up to, I think, two to three days for you to get them, which they made it a little bit sooner. I'm not going to complain about that. There you have it, guys. Do I recommend this? Absa. Fucking lootly. Um, I find that uh, having something of high quality that you will use on a daily basis, uh, especially in this instance, glasses, is something to not cheap out on. And I'm okay with paying the higher price tag. This entire thing came up to around $460. Now, is that affordable for everyone? Not really, but to me, it's worth it. And I'm willing to pay for my vision. Uh, especially for something that's going to last me at least the next three to four years. So if you're thinking about, let's say, wearing just one pair of glasses, not wanting to switch from one to another or contacts, I would highly recommend the Rocker glasses, eyeglasses. Be mindful to pick up the options that work out for you when it comes to the lens material and the treatment on the lens. And if there's any discounts that I can get from Rocker, I will put them in the comment section below or in the description below not the comment section, the description below. And until next time, remember to live abundantly and I'll catch you guys in the next one.